I intend to put it on YouTube tomorrow, so if you don't want to be photographed, now's the time to leave. So I think it's very important in a meeting like this where there are two sides to an issue that we set some ground rules as to how I'm going to conduct the meeting. And it's very simple, really. If you want the bollards to be retained, please lay, raise your right hand. If you want the bollards removed, please raise your left hand. Now what I will do for balance is ensure that people for and people against are given an equal opportunity to speak. Speak for a maximum of about three minutes. Please don't interrupt people when they're speaking because it's rude. Okay? I think it's important also that I let you know Carterton Town Council's view upon this issue. <coughs> Essentially, the Town Council has no responsibility for the planning issues, has no responsibility for the regulatory issues, and is not involved in the installation or removal of the TRO. Our councillors who are volunteers obviously live in the community, they have their own views and I know some of them have been active uh, in the area doing various bits and pieces. But the view of the council is that we do not have a regulatory or functional role in this issue. <coughs> now as you're aware On the 17th of March 2016, Oxfordshire County Council Cabinet approved the installation of the Ballard and <coughs> a 20 mph speed limit around that area. It's interesting that in the decisions column of that document, it says office to officers to undertake monitoring of the scheme. So I don't know whether that has actually been done. <coughs> I suppose it's appropriate that we look at why the bollards came to be removed. Uh, it was following an incident when uh, a resident was taken ill and an ambulance couldn't reach him because it can't swim Brook Road, didn't have an alternative route and uh, it was uh, very very difficult for the, for the gentleman concerned. What I did immediately after that, uh, I emailed SCAR, South Central Ambulance Service, advising them of the difficulty. They, in fact, were aware of it. So I spoke to the people who programmed their satellites, their command and control <coughs> system. Uh, and I pointed out that there were two alternate methods of entering that area depending on whether an ambulance was coming from the Burford area or the Whitney area. Uh, and I'm told that they now amended their command and control system, but I don't know if it's been tested. I also sent an email uh, a few days later to the leader of uh, Oxfordshire County Council, the county councillors, and um, some of the district councillors. And essentially, the nub of what I said was that the, the issue is gathering ahead of steam and I feel it would be prudent for Oxfordshire County Council, David Wilson Holmes and West Oxfordshire District Council to communicate directly with the local residents setting out what they intend to do to resolve the matter both in the short and long term. It is only a matter of time before the press become involved. Now that email was written on the 10th of September and today is the 11th of October. Um, I didn't get many replies to it, funnily enough, um, but that rather shows the, the, <coughs> the attitude within OCC. I'm sorry, please, I have to say that. <coughs> David Wilson Holmes are the contractor, as you know. I received an email from uh, one of their senior employees on the 9th of October, because uh, I asked him to attend this meeting. It says... I'm not dealing with this personally, but I can confirm that the traffic bollards were installed on Swinbrook Road at the development at the request of OCC. 
They formed part of our planning agreement for the scheme and were a legal obligation. The bollards were removed temporarily whilst an alternative locking mechanism was sourced. Once this has been resolved, they will be reinstalled and naturally the emergency services and the council have full access. Um, I'm aware that David Watson Homes have been looking at trying to install them, take them in, it's a bit like the hokey Koki really. Um, I think what they're forgetting is that if somebody comes up to that entrance in an emergency vehicle and tries to remove those bars, I think they weigh 40 kilos each, is that right? Yes. They are extremely heavy. So that, that really um, requires perhaps a, a different solution if the intention is to remove the bars to enable traffic to go through. I've also been in touch with West Oxfordshire District Council. We're lucky enough to have Maxine Blossom, who's the chairman of the council with us tonight, who will speak shortly, I'm sure. Uh, and the, one of the planning officers said to me, the bollards were the sole control of OCC, they requested them and agreed with them, with the applicant, through a legal agreement. So although they were discussed at the committee meetings, there were always a county requirement, as was the traffic regulation order. So there you see the uh, difference between the two, two authorities. You will have seen the Whitney Gazette yesterday, where a chap called Martin Crabtree, the OCC spokesman, uh, said there have been also been problems in the past with speeding prior to the bollards being installed. The bollards have been removed on a temporary basis and there seems to have been a lack of awareness of their presence amongst the ambulance service. We have ensured that the ambulance service have been made aware of their presence again and of the availability of other suitable routes into the development and to Swinbrook Road north of the bollards. The intention is to replace the bollards shortly. So that was in the Oxford Gazette, the uh, Whitney Gazette yesterday. Um, Peter, thanks ever so much for coming on this evening. I realise I don't want to put on you as the OCC councillor, but perhaps you can give us a bit of a brief from your perspective where we are. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for all coming. Uh, it's a very contentious subject tonight. Um, on receiving the email from Ron, I straight away um, took it up with the traffic manager in North, who's based, uh, comes from Foundry, that's um, Paul Wilson, and he covers Carterton. Carterton is covered from Foundry on the County Council. Um, I was assured by him that there was nothing I could do as a County Council, it was out of my remit because. It's an unadopted road. Part of the situation is unadopted. Therefore, as a county council, I've got no jurisdiction over it. I made it crystal clear to him that that wasn't uh, an acceptable situation. Um, he then put me on to the legal department. Louder, please. Sorry? Louder, please. He then put me on to the legal department who are responsible for drawing up the um, adoption of the road. And after four days of ringing, I finally get to speak to somebody. This has all happened in the last fortnight. And it's happened in the last fortnight, apart from me speaking to Ron, because I've been waiting for people to come back to me. The traffic manager was on a holiday for a fortnight and didn't get back to the 1st of October, so there's no way I could take advice from him. Um, I do think it's a bit too easy to push it all to the county council's way because this planning condition was asked for by Carterton Town Council when the plan came in in the first place to shut off traffic going up that road because they didn't want it to be a rat run. We went to the planning department. I sit on planning as well as Maxine. It was discussed quite at length and we both left that meeting with an understanding that there was going to be bollards there. Um, the, there had been discussion within the meeting about having bollards that raised up and down regarding the emergency vehicles. 
From then onwards, uh, it's been a downward spiral because the plan was passed, the builders have started developing the site, and it up until I think it was January, February this year, people were moaning uh, about the Ballards and the Roger, the Ballards and the Roger. And whilst I've chased them up, I know Maxine and everybody else has chased them up as well. The problem is the bollards are not suitable for the job. The bollards are too heavy. You can't expect ambulance staff to get out of an ambulance. It would take more than two of them to lift it out. And then what's the protocol? Do they spend all day driving the ambulance through them and then trying to put them back in and what have you? I would suggest if it was somebody on the way to one of your relatives, you wouldn't want them to do that. You would want them to get to the person who is injured, ill or, or infirmed in any way and leave the bollards led on the footpath. Then we have another problem, maybe somebody comes <coughs> along, it's not a very well lit area, hits it with a push bike or falls down the hole with a bollard to come out of. So there's no respect, there is no protocol to the way to deal with it. So where do we go from here? The situation is, because I was told it was out of my jurisdiction, I inquired about, well, the person in charge of safety in County Council is a fire chief. He's responsible for all safety issues, road, highways, etc., etc. So then I was told, well, it's no, no good speaking to the uh, fire chief. It's, it's not in his, his responsibility either. So having several heated department um, debates with the legal department, who, for some own reason, wouldn't come tonight, and they won't come out, I think they will have to today, but they couldn't come out to meet me, and I suggested a meeting with the town clerk, that we try and resolve this as soon as we can. I didn't call for this meeting, Nicholas Ward Johnson called for this meeting, in spite of what he said in the debate. And I'll tell you why, I wasn't against this meeting, but I just felt it was too an important issue to be left for another 10 days. I wanted it resolved as quickly as possible. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a bit of an expert when it comes to somebody dying in your arms in the road waiting for an ambulance. And I did that in uh, 1999 and I still see my son, the last image of him is tire marks over his face. So um, it's not an easy life. It's not a situation where um, it's a do or don't situation. The problem is the bollards are they are at the moment are not suitable for the situation. So I honestly think if the bollards stay, they're either to be made of aluminium or something light enough that somebody can lift them out. Then we've got the issue of lock. Some of the ambulances come out here at the moment from Banbury, from uh, Thatcham, Newbury, and one came to Bampton the other week from Southampton. And I'm sure they can all fiddle around and find keys in their pockets. So to have enough keys to do this lock with the ambulance is just a non-starter. Shouldn't have to stop full stop to do bollards. I mean, that's just taking extra minutes that some could well, Can we just let him speak and then we'll see later? The situation is now, as of this morning, because I've been given two lots of instruction, one it was out of my remit, then thankfully, thanks to Ron chasing up as well as myself in the legal department, they have now said that the road north of the bollards is within um, the existing road network, so it hasn't happened, it's not got to have a... Um, it is it is adopted. Adopted. So I'm hearing that today, I said, well, right then, it's come back into my responsibility. So I've done the, the, the thing that I should do, and it should have gone to that, the fire chief in the first place. The fire chief knows nothing about this, 
film I found called this morning. The ambulance people who have had free call rights to that area have had nothing from, uh, they haven't told the fire chief, and the fire chief is saying, well, hold on a minute. I've got to have a look at this now. Now it's in my arena. I'm responsible for the safety of everything in the county. So a fire crew are coming out not only to look at the bars, but also to see whether they can be used and can be lifted. Also, it's, it's quite unacceptable to have this situation where you have keys. Because you could be having fire crews from Farringdon, you have fire crews from anywhere. So that's the situation where we are. I'm very upset it's gone this way. And yes, the County Council do bear some responsibility in it, in as much as when it came um, to having this condition put on it, I think someone probably should have been a little bit more aware of not only we've got the issue with the bars, but we've got the issue with the new road coming through. Well, there's no giveaway signs on it whatsoever, yes. yeah. right? And that is not adopted. So I haven't got any jurisdiction over that. That's not adopted. But also, I think Ron's been in today, and I've had a lot today, because this chap screaming on the phone to me, it's in a 20 mile an hour zone. Well, there's no sign saying it's in a 20 mile zone. So when you challenge, as I have done, the fact there's no sign saying it's in the 20 mile zone. Also got to me, well, it's it's the responsibility of the builders. I said, well, it seems everybody's shouting news is responsibility if they ain't getting on and doing the job. So all I can say to you is one for Ron, <coughs> this is a piece of paper that the fire chief in, issued an instruction at 12.24 today and he wants a full report to go back to both him and Kent for how many are lucky to be me today um, to the report of, over the existing use of the bollards. If they're not suitable, something's got to be found to sort the issue out. Also, of course, we need to sort out the signs. Also, we need to sort out people on the housing estate know that it's a 20 miles zone and quite honestly, and I, I hope you're not all going to throw bricks at me, but there is a lot of speeding going on, but the speeding is not from delivery drivers, the speeding is from a lot of people who don't live there. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, just, I'm sorry to, to tell you the truth. Now, the other issue you've got is you can finish here. Can I just Okay. Thank you for listening. Another issue is I've got a letter from the doctor over the issue about people who've lived there all their life and the fact that they weren't consulted, especially people who live north of the Bollards, have never been consulted, um, the people who lived in the older houses. <coughs> so the situation there is um, do they have grandfather rights, which could have been put in in this case? Um, at the end of the day, where we go now is to get the public feeling today. The, the way that it's written up, those bars have got to go back. If not, those other ones have got to go there. That is down to the planning, planning commission and down to the legal agreement between the county council and the developers. But obviously, your views will be taken on you tonight. <coughs> And obviously the fire chief. So I stand before you. I, I know we're in the WRL, but even if I did sing Jerusalem tonight, I wouldn't be on the right side of everybody. Has, has that any, is got, exactly got where I stand. Questions for Councillor. Well, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, for both of you, Jess, thank you very much for explaining sort of uh, where we've come from uh, in, in recent history. Um, one thing we didn't cause, sorry, one thing you didn't cover was, was the rationale behind deciding on the bollards in the first place. If you're able to uh, elucidate us on that one. Uh, Maxine Cotton. Oh, yeah. Any much. other questions for Councillor Hanley? Yes, sir. So, I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking Sue, Steph, Colin, the saved my life. I'm the guy that had the heart attack uh, up on the allotment. And this was an absolute fiasco. I was lying there uh, at desk door and uh, the ambulance was stuck behind the bollards. And if it wasn't for uh, the presence of 
redirecting them, giving them instructions that it took over 55 minutes for the ambulance. It nearly cost me my life. And uh, I hear what you're saying, Councillor. All these ideas are wonderful. But something recalls about beer up in the brewery. Thank you. Any other questions for Thank you, Peter. Uh, I'd like to ask Francis Crossland, who's the chair of West Oxford District Council. Sorry, did I miss one? That's what we were just going to talk about now. Uh, yeah, why were they put in? For what reason were they put on? That's, that's, that's what we're going to talk about now. Thank you, Rachel. Can we, can, we, can we just not, not start speaking to each other? We're trying to all run this meeting as orderly as we can with so many people with so many different views. And it won't be helpful if you're uh, shouting at each other. Back to you. Good evening everybody. Now Ron has introduced me as the Chairman of West Oxford District Council, which I am. But I am not here in that capacity tonight. I am here as your ward councillor. These boards are in my ward, your ward. I am here to find out what you want to see what I can do to help you come to the best solution for everybody here. So I am speaking for myself only as your councillor. Now, I know this has raised an awful lot of strong feelings on both sides, understandably. And I wanted to get to the bottom of what it was all about. So to help me form an opinion, I did a test. I wanted to know the difference in time between the short route from Chilton Park into town and the longer route up the new road. I was very conscious of the incident which the gentleman just told us about and I'm delighted you're still with us to tell us about it, sir. I wanted to know about the timings involved. My house is the very last house on Burford Road before it becomes Shilton Road. From my house, it took me one minute and 35 seconds to drive to a specific point on Sheldrook Park, going through Swindrook Road. Then I did the same journey from my house along Shilton and up the New Road to the same point, and it took me two minutes and 40 seconds. There's a time difference between the two routes of one minute five seconds so it's not as long as perhaps it, you might imagine now the rationale behind why the road was made a no through road in the first place Swinbrook road is a quiet residential road it is the only means of access by car to other parts of the town for more than 1,000 drivers living in the 630 houses along the nine roads serviced by Swinbrook Road. Set against this is the convenience <coughs> of a more direct route into town for the 65 allotment holders and the residents of more than 1,500 homes on Shelton Park with a correspondingly higher number of cars. The consequences in terms of traffic movements along Swinbrook Road if unlimited traffic is allowed from Shelton Park. It would be double or perhaps even treble the number of car movements per day on a road <coughs> designed for only a light flow. That is an extremely heavy increase. Now at the southern end of Swinbrook Road, traffic from Glenmore Park, Bonham Place, and the Brisewood Estate are all funnelled into a single junction by the mini roundabout between Burford and Shilton Roads. At busy times of day, the backlog of cars stacking up back from the Upaven Way traffic lights regularly causes long queues right onto the Shilton Road. If we allow more cars onto the Swinbrook route, which has to give way to the main roads, 
The result would be virtual gridlock for people trying to get out of Glenmore and Bonham Place. David Wilson has been building in Carterton for about 15 years now, and it's been acknowledged by officers and councillors at every stage of the planning process that Swinbrook was unsuitable for heavy traffic. And when they applied to develop beyond Swinbrook Road, one of the conditions of consent was that access between the old and the new sites should be limited to cyclists, pedestrians, and emergency vehicles only with collapsible bollards being regarded as the most suitable solution. That decision was finalised in 2014. A linked condition was that the developers should build a new, wider road to service the new homes. A road fit for this purpose. A road designed to cater for all traffic to and from the new houses, and the allotments, and the football club. It was always intended that this would be the main artery onto the new development. But until the shorter route via Swinbrook was closed off, people became accustomed to taking the shortcut, and now, understandably, they'd like to keep it. But it's important to remember that this was never part of the planning commission, and details of what it would be like when it was completed have been in the public domain since at least 2014, with more generalised intentions in the plan for years before that. These are facts. And so, can I say, as kindly as I can to the people, the new Shilton Park community, didn't your solicitor inform you that this road was going to be blocked off when he was doing the searches for your new home? The information was out there for you. It took a long time to get the ball art installed, but in February this year they finally appeared, much to the relief of local residents. Before that, the volume and speed of traffic had become a real safety risk for drivers, using this road as a shortcut to the north of town. The ball arts have been widely welcomed by local residents for the additional safety they provide for children at play, pedestrians, dog walkers and runners heading up to the country park, cyclists, and for the restoration of a quality of life that the residents have lost. People living around Shilbrook Avenue have similarly benefited. Cars can no longer cut through from Shilton Road up Shilbrook Avenue and then onto the new development. So the safety benefits have also extended to their neighbourhood, doubling the number of people who feel safer as a result of it becoming a no-through road. <coughs> We soon realised there were problems. From the start, like Peter, I was concerned that the type of bollards installed were heavy, cumbersome and unwieldy, should an emergency occur. Not at all what we had asked up for at the planning committee. We had envisaged a more high-tech system with bollards automatically folding down into the road in response to a digital zapper carried by the emergency services. But when I asked about this, I was told by OCC Highways that the traffic usage was too low to justify this more complex and, dare I suggest, more expensive system. <coughs> anyway, I personally have contacted the relevant authorities on eight occasions between February and September this year to express my concerns. I've got detailed emails and photographs if anybody's interested later. I'll just give you a flavour of them. On the 10th of July, me to David Wilson. I have received complaints from local residents that there have been occasions when the emergency services have been delayed in responding to 999 calls. Clearly, we must do our utmost to prevent this happening again. Even if you have already done this once, could I please, and I under underlined that, please, ask you to double check that all the relevant groups know how the process works. Lives could be at risk. It has been flagged up several times. Sorry, I've got a bit of a throat. I eventually received the following reply on the 16th of July. The Bollard and No Through Road have been put in place in accordance with OCC Highways requirements. As part of this process, 
the Highway Authority inform all the emergency services. So, this seemed like a positive reassurance that all the emergency services were fully aware of the change and they had a key to activate the mechanism. Sadly, we all know better, don't we? As we're all aware, there have been a number of occasions when fire and ambulance services have been obstructed by these bollards. On one occasion, the ambulance crew was sent the wrong way by their sat nav. On another, a patient had to wait 50 minutes for help to arrive, you sir. But that is totally unacceptable in anybody's books. But the reason for that particular de delay was that all the local ambulances were already out on call. And as Peter has already mentioned, they had to call on an out-of-area ambulance which came from Banbury on that occasion. Banbury, that was 40 minutes plus to get here before they could start to treat the gentleman. So the 55 minutes you waited was horrendous, but a great deal of that was travel time rather than bollard interference time. Now we've got to have emergency access to all areas of the town. But the present bollards, I have to agree with the Councillor Hamley again, they've proved unsuitable for purpose. There are too many things can go wrong. An emergency crew might forget the number combination or not pick up the right key. Because they're made of metal, the number wheels are already beginning to rust. The bollards are extremely heavy. I, for one, don't have the strength to lift them out or replace them. And not all paramedics are big, strong guys. Yes, Peter has already pointed out, if they were not lifted back into place, it's a dangerous obstruction in the road. Now, <coughs> the people who will be most directly affected, the residents of Swinbrook Road and Shilbrook Avenue, have overwhelmingly told me, and I thank all of you who have been in touch to tell me your personal views, I really have been overwhelmed by the number of responses. So thank you all for talking to me about it. All these people have told me that they want the bollards reinstated. I've had just two emails saying you don't want the bollards to go back. Now, in my opinion, as Peter has said, these particular bollards are not fit for purpose. There are several options, perhaps. A traffic limitation notice, no entry except for residents and emergency vehicles. But that's only effective if monitored with substantial penalties, penalties for misuse. You could have speed humps at regular intervals down the road, but they're noisy and, I'm told, unpopular with ambulance drivers and their poor patients. <laughs> it's been suggested we build a chicane halfway down the racetrack part of Swinbrook Road. Would that make it impossible impos for the emergency services to get past? and something you might be able to do something about. At present, the nearest defibrillator is on the outside wall of the community centre in Norrigold Square. Maybe, as a community, we could try to fundraise to install another defibrillator, mounted outside the football club, <laughs> so that there are defibrillators in more areas of the town. That's crazy. What's the <laughs> <laughs> so these, these are the suggestions which I have been given by you. Or, if you want, if you still feel bollards are your best answer, then I suggest we must go for a different type of bollard. One which is lighter and more manoeuvrable, or perhaps a rising barrier which can be activated by an electronic means. It's, I've got one more minute. It's four years too late now to protest about the road being closed fully. <clears throat> There's no realistic chance of reopening Kilkenny Lane in the foreseeable future. <coughs> David Wilson has spent a lot of money on a purpose-built road for the new houses. They wouldn't do that unless it was necessary. <laughs> In terms of travelling, of time spent travelling, it takes 65 seconds longer to go by the new road than via the Swinbrook route. You need to think about all these things. Maybe you have a better idea. 
This is what we're here to discuss. But whatever happens, we need better signage across the town to reflect the recent challenges and we need the adoption of new roads as quickly as possible so that legally enforceable traffic regulations can be introduced. I hope so I've explained the rationale behind the Well, I did have some questions, if I may. Mr Spurs, that's yes. just you. I think we're down to the questions there, go ahead. Um, I appreciate your, all the efforts you've been to to, uh, to study the various roads and, and, and journey times. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned, of course, that Swinford Road, in your opinion, is not suitable for um, traffic. Um, heavy traffic. Uh, heavy, heavy traffic. Oh, additional traffic, I'm sorry. Would you consider it uh, less suitable than Chilton Park mm, yeah, for, yeah. For, for that traffic? Don't or would you rather the problem make that? Don't two runs make a right? No, I can't. It doesn't well, matter. Okay. You've not That's got the same. Okay. I am not the decision maker, sir. I am here but to. What I'd like to do is, is share it around. I, did, I just had two quick questions. Okay. The other question was when you were um, finding your 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 uh, laps. Yes. Um, did you come in? Did you turn right across the sixty mile an hour traffic coming over the blind hill? Onto the new yes. Road? You did. Yes. How long did you have to wait? I didn't. That was lucky, wasn't it? Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, I do. I think. Um, Can we just listen, please? We did. Swim, I don't, it's, um, Swim Park simply has not. They have not thought about traffic management in any way. The infrastructure is dreadful. Coming off that main road onto the Shilton Road, it's blind. So it's blind going in. There are no lights to come into the estate. When you go out, it's a, it's blind, and there's shooting people coming down there. I hate using that road. I like going through Swinbrook, so I do not speed um, because it's safer for me driving. Now, also the whole, I mean, the whole of Swinbrook Park, the roads are absolutely horrendous. There's no markings, there's no speed things or anything. Everything has to go through Shilton Park, which is now a rut rat run. And as everybody in here knows, Shilton Park is a nightmare. There are loads. It's all single track because there are park cars parked absolutely everywhere. It's incredibly unsafe for us. So using Swinbrook Park, and they all have drives. Even their drives, the, uh, Both they have, of them have drives. Yeah, just yeah, but, me, on one person me, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether they have what drives. Or point? <laughs> My point is, is that we've got to have there's got to be a safer route for people on Swinbrook Park to get off the estate. Not only that, but um, you know, talking about the ambulances and things like that, having lighter bollards isn't an answer. Then not shouldn't be able to stop at all. If you're going to um, an accident then every second counts, and then having to stop and pull up bloody bollards is ridiculous. <laughs> having right. a zapper, I agree, that's not a bad okay. idea. you got your point. But no. slow, you get people to slow down. Um, regarding what Lady said earlier, um, obviously when you were buying a property, uh, you knew exactly where the house is, where the, where the estate is and how it's laid out. Uh, you coming through Twinbrook Road, causing our road more dangerous. It's it's everyone. Everyone. Look, it's everyone. Yeah, but but well, no, I appreciate no, no, that the gentleman at the back yeah. had issues, obviously, with uh, emergency um, situation. Yes. Uh, but when I was walking my dogs, they're quite slow. Walk a crossing road, chap, and I'm sorry to use this language, but moron, stopped two meters from me and my dog because he was speeding. So that's an issue. That's a big issue for us at the moment. I think you're right, and I think, I think speed limitations need to go on that. Okay, like that. thank you. Lady in the back of the room, please. please. I'd like to go back to the comments on the train that was made for me, that the roads have been become uh, uh, a rat run without the bollards there. We moved on to Empire Drive, which is on Springbrook Park, near where the showground used to be. Three years ago, the bollards weren't there originally, and we noticed the traffic was smoothly going two different directions. As soon as those bollards went up, Empire Drive and our route out of that estate, that became the rat run and is now more dangerous. I have done school runs both directions. And I can tell you when the bollards aren't there. So you don't want to run at your house, but so you want to have it. It's not a rat run. It's not a rat run. It's not a rat run. It's called Chicken Park. Are you interrupt? I'm going to ask you to leave. All right? Simple as that. Cool, no problem. Right, so at the back, with your hand up. Well, just I, a minute. Just a minute. My, point. My, my point was that I don't think that just removing.
removing the bollards is a good idea. I think you do need a traffic calming measure because you do have both directions, you have all three directions that you can go out to town. You have people doing school runs and things. You do need some kind of traffic calming measure. As we have on the estates, we've had the box put in, we've had lots of things put in on the estates. They need to also go onto that road so we all have traffic calming, we all live in the same way. And we're Thank there you. So are you good about that? Extended 
and nothing else. So we didn't know. And I most strongly support the removal of these bollards. My reasons for saying so are very, very simple, and I'll keep it in a few minutes, I hope. First of all, there's already the well documented evidence of the emergency services. No need to go that word any further, that's well, well discussed. Let's consider the long term residents of Stonebrook Road who have lived above, above the bollards. They are suddenly inconvenienced by this and have to drive from the Shildon or Stonebrook Parks to get to the town centre. It's not a time issue, it's a traffic density issue. Those who belong to bollards and wish to gain access to the allotments or the football ground again are forced to take the long diversion through already very congested roads. Why? Just to protect the relatively few on Silver Road. Is it really acceptable to effectively sanitise one road for the benefit of a few? The one of our senior planning officers, I'm not going to name, is of the view that it really is inappropriate to block off this road in planning issues, and I agree. In some ways, it's echoes of the Northern Ireland Peace Line, but at these bricks. Shilton Park, when it was initially uh, designed, 750 houses. John Prescott, the then Secretary of State, extended that to 1250, 1500 houses, therefore, more cars as well. At that stage, the, uh, there should have been a link road to North Blue Crescent that would obviate some of the traffic flows and help. That didn't happen. And as many of you have noticed, work has now begun on the east side of Monaghan Way with 600 houses. That's going to make Shelton and Stonebrook Parks even more busy. And uh, here we are, Stonebrook Road is still protected, whilst the men take the brunt of the load. <laughs> but we're now at this juncture that the many <coughs> Many of you will not appreciate the significant part and benefit that Shilton Park and Swinbrook Park have added to our town. <coughs> so I think all Central 106 money. And that goes to councils to build leisure centres, community centres, and the like. They pay for it, we all enjoy it, so let's show them where it is. So I can in no way increase the suggested segregation in increased traffic flow through these states that are already very busy, they're congested and blocked, and density is way, way where it should be. The ball has no place in the time they have to go. We really have turned that famous Churchill quote on its head. Never in the field of traffic planning. <laughs> 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 I ask you to put, put, put some more things. I, I thought it would be good from a devil's advocate point of view, and I really haven't got a view on this. I just thought I'd reiterate some points that have struck me. Um, first of all, we talk about speeding, yet as far as I'm aware, there's been no empirical research into the traffic volume and traffic speeds on that, on that area. Secondly, we talk about accidents, and correct me if I'm wrong, that on the, the bottom half of Swinbrook Road, I don't believe there have any road traffic accidents relating to speeding. So my point is that there is a need by the county and the police to conduct some proper research as yeah. to yeah. the yes. use of the road. Yeah, they're very cool. Just on that road. They can also block the road off with our cars. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> uh, come on. Oh, let's, really? let's, 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 let's be sensible. Okay, so we can do we can do a chicane with our cars, like shimmer, like shitty parts. Okay, no, thank you, thank you very much. Now, the other observation that uh, that I have is that if you stop cars going somewhere, they go somewhere else, and that means they go on the new estate around there. The roads there are quite narrow, so. So the, the other point that I'd like to make so far <clears throat> is that the bollards that were put in are totally useless. They're completely 
not uh, fit for purpose. I think you'd agree with that. Yeah? Just a second. And so th those are the points that I've deduced so far. I realise that there is a 50-50 or a 60-40 split. So if we've had some people speak against the bollards. Who would like to speak for the bollards? <laughs> Sir, at the back. First of all, it's simple. They were a condition of planning. When the whole thing was in When the estate was designed and approved, we knew what the traffic load on the estate was going to be. And it was all fine then. Nobody had a problem with the shape and the layout of the road. So they, the bollards, were approved. Nobody lived there then. Well, 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 okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can you turn around? I will do. I'm just addressing Kelsey. Yeah, but I can't eat the way. There's 20 mile an hour. So I'm happy. And the wrong side. Okay, right. I haven't actually finished. Okay.